Hello, everybody. My name is Chase. And I'm director of the 2010 film The Last Airbender, M. Night Shyamalan. We're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Uncultured Swines. <laughs> uh, the show where we give each other's movies to watch and we discuss them. I feel like we say this every time, but we have an interesting lineup. <laughs> <laughs> do we? Do we, Chase? Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, today we're going to be discussing um, the film Stuart Little and the very much better film Aliens. <laughs> I don't know about that, Micah. Stuart Little is a masterpiece. All right, would you like to go into it? No. Because <laughs> first, we actually have questions to answer. Oh, all right. All right. All right. So, these are some... Um, these are some interesting was, questions. I'll, I'll I'll give her that. I was actually in line for Tower of Terror when I got these questions. <laughs> what a time to get them! I was literally in line for Tower of Terror, and um, I was like, "Hey, Chloe texted me," and my cousin who I was with was like, "Who?" <laughs> it's funny because like Chloe was like, "I want to give you guys questions to answer," and I was like, "Oh, okay, that's cool," and then like. I was like, oh, Chloe, do you have those questions that you want us to answer? And then she just sent me this fucking mile-long paragraph. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's. Uh, I guess we'll just get right into it. Question one. Okay. Would you rather have sexual intercourse with your mother's head on Danny DeVito's body or Danny DeVito's head on your mother's body? I'd, I'd rather kill myself. Is killing myself an option? Um... I, I choose full Danny DeVito. I choose I can't answer any of this, and I refuse to because my mother watches this. <laughs> Hello, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. Question two. What's the last four digits of your social security number? Go fuck yourself. Those are words. I mean, like, you can condense them. You can, like, make it like an acrostic poem. <laughs> um, the last four digits of my social security number are, um, 4200. I tried to make a 420 joke, but I. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no reaction. <laughs> Because uh, Chase was sitting there like, did she actually just get the last digits of her social security? <laughs> that was a disaster. <laughs> Question number three. Your favorite memory of Chloe? <laughs> That's how it's phrased. Okay, so um, one day I was in... This is actually... It's not my favorite memory, but it is a good one. So I had a history class with her. And our history teacher, um, he was quite the character. You know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> from um, uh, eighth grade? No, 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 no. From um, junior year. I'm sorry. I should have. We're in a class, and I was like, <sighs> you know, has anybody noticed that he has the same demeanor and look as Ted Bundy? <laughs> you told me this story. <laughs> And um, and she goes, he does look like Ted Bundy. So our teacher goes, all right, we're going to go down to the library. I'm going to use the computers there. So we're walking down to the library, and I realize that Chloe is no longer beside me. I look behind me, and she goes, and she's with the teacher, and she goes, has anybody ever told you that you look like Ted Bundy? Which is not a compliment. Yeah. Did everyone any tell you that you look like a really famous serial killer that killed like dozens of women? <laughs> and he goes, "No, I don't think anybody's told me that." And she goes, "I think she went like you do." <laughs> <laughs> Just to rub it in. I was like, again, I don't remember if she said that, but I was like, Chloe, why didn't you tell him that? <laughs> Like, that's, so, that's 
that's not even close to a compliment. My favorite memory of Chloe is one time me and her were at a party and we were <laughs> sitting next to each other and we were telling stories. And um, we were te- I, all of a sudden I just like turned to her and was like, one time I shit in Walmart and she fucking snotted everywhere. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I have ever seen in my life. Nothing will ever top it. Not even the Cheeto in the ice dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> Are we seriously gonna bring up Cheeto in the fucking ice dispenser? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Are you laughing? So your little audio go up. You good? <laughs> Are you away from the mic? I'm back. Okay. You can ask the next question now. Number four, have you ever had diarrhea in Applebee's? Who hasn't? Seriously, I think that that's the best place to have it. My mom used to work at Applebee's, actually. The only place that gives me the shits more than Applebee's is Davenport's. Oh, I've been to Davenport's. I don't have good memories of Davenport's because every single time I go there, it's for a baby shower. I don't know why. (laughs) That's weird, but every single time I used to go to Davenport's, I would, like, have explosive diarrhea afterwards. <laughs> what are you getting at Davenport? I just got, like, a burger. and But, like, for some reason, like, I would just, like, come home and the toilet would be destroyed. Davenport's food poisoned me? Not clickbait. I mean, I wasn't sick. I just took a massive shit. I took a fat shit, as the kids would say. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. The office or Parks and Rec? Parks and Rec, easily. Parks and Rec. I, I don't think it, the office is funny. I think it's I think it's funny. I think I, I haven't finished Parks and Rec, though. I don't know. I There's not that many office clips that legitimately make me laugh this is not my style of comedy at all and parks and rec is the same kind of style of comedy but for some reason i think it works way better i think i think it's just like a diff- the different characters i find parks and rec infinitely more enjoyable than the office the office is for people who don't like friends that's what people like who friends. watch the office are like they were like really obnoxious about not liking friends. I don't like to think that I'm that obnoxious. I just really don't like friends. Anyway, I don't know. Um, and that seventy shows for people who are better than everybody. So Of course. That seventy show is for people who are going to the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. What's the most morally questionable thing you've ever done? Um, shitting in the urinal, obviously. No comment? Um, I have many comments <laughs> about that one statement you just made, Chase. I mean, like, what else is there? I don't think, I don't think I've done anything more morally questionable. I think that I don't know, maybe, maybe saying um, that the person that uh, shit in the tampon disposal box was my hero. Uh, because what does that say about everybody else I've looked up to? <laughs> Just means they're all a train wreck. Let's be <laughs> honest. I don't know. Anyway, Next. question number seven. 
it's circumcised or uncircumcised. Now, this is a weird question for me as a guy, because I don't even know what uncircumcised feels like because they took my foreskin away from me. So, is that does that question mean would I rather be circumcised or uncircumcised? Does that mean would you rather have a dick that's either way, or would you rather like be with somebody, like fuck somebody? With an uncircumcised dick. Like, I know the difference or something? Like, I don't know. I don't know the difference either. No comment. That's my answer. (laughs) I'll join you. These next two questions are very... um... (laughs) I have an answer for that. Uh, the next question is, what's the gayest thing you think Chase has done? Um, I think not only owning a lightsaber, but but s- talking about having a lightsaber fight with another man. That's not fucking gay. <laughs> That's like the straightest thing I've ever heard. Chase. That is the gayest thing I've ever heard. As a gay person trust me you haven't been on star wars tiktok literally every single for for some reason it's like a sign to show that you're straight that's like to like star wars for some reason for you anyway chase what's the gayest thing you think you've done um have sex with men (laughs) was it nice flex (laughs) no comment (laughs) Oh, that means yes. Uh, I'm not answering the next question. Ass. We're skipping it. <laughs> no, we're skipping it. Do I you refuse. believe in God? Chase, do you believe in God? I believe in a higher power. I believe that one day... um, One day, the Chase Place channel is going to shut down... And- in um, society as we know it will crumble so yeah so it won't even matter <laughs> there'll be no more chase plays have I ever told you guys in the audience my plan if I ever got my own planet no I don't think so alright so my plan is that one day I'm going to have my own planet right Following what's it going to be called um, I think it's going to be called, um, Planet M. Night. Named after the most successful and greatest man to ever live. Absolutely. He'll be the only one on it. Just kidding. Um, so I'm going to have my own planet and I'm going to bring along with me, um, like 10 children. A handful of very, very, very old people. And no other young people. Just me. I'll be the youngest, youngest like, adult there. It'll be just like the movie Old! <laughs> <laughs> this is just me explaining the synopsis of Old. No, that's for next podcast. So, um... So I have all these people, and by the time that these kids are old enough to kind of take care of themselves, the older people would have died. I'm the only adult that they have in their life. So they come to me for advice, right? And I say, I create a religion, right? And I create a religion in which I am the only prophet. Mm -hmm. And they have no choice but to believe me, right? I'm the only, like, what else are they going to believe? We're the only people on the planet. Right. I guess that's how religion started on this planet. Exactly. But here's the thing. I'm going to be honest. Not yet, though. 100% honest. Not 100% honest. Not yet. So I'm going to create a religion. And it's going to be a very crazy religion. It's not going to be so crazy that, like, I mentally damage them for the rest of their lives. Not yet, at least. It's just going to be, like, I'm just going to tell them, like, a way of living that, you know, they're always going to be used to. And so... When I'm on my deathbed, I will be celebrated. And these children, they would have been unrelated. So, you know, hopefully they have their own children and they teach them the same things. Mm -hmm. 
So it'll it'll happen. Let's see, how old will I live to? Maybe seventy if I'm lucky. So it'll happen sixty years, fifty-two years of me like teaching them this, right? And then I'm gonna be on my deathbed, and they're all gonna be waiting for me because I'm so celebrated. I'm the only prophet who knows how to talk to the one God, which basically makes everything worth living. And my last words are gonna be, "I lied." <laughs> And then, and then they'll just have to live with that information. What did she mean? <laughs> well, like fucking should... Rosebud from Citizen Kane. Well, I guess I should be more. I want them to know that I lied about the religion. Absolutely, I want them to know it that it was I lied... all bullshit. Exactly, because then you go home and you base your entire life off of this, and now what? <laughs> now what? Very introspective. Very introspective. Anyway, chocolate or vanilla? <laughs> vanilla. Vanilla. Vanilla is best flavor. It really is. You can do so much with it. Honestly, I don't like chocolate. I don't understand the appeal of chocolate ice cream in general. Anyway, See, um, it's good if it's not too chocolatey. No, I just don't like it in general. I just vanilla. Give me vanilla. I'm a love, boring, I, basic bitch. I'm going to be honest. My favorite ice cream flavor is mint chocolate chip. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Chase? You're going you're gonna to be with me on that planet, and I'm going to kill you for that <laughs> god. I'm going to sacrifice you for that god. All right? So everybody, no, will... everybody on that planet watches Chase plays. Me and you are the only prophets. <laughs> I want to be a prophet. They have to call me Chase Plays, too. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. Anyway, next question. And how many years do you expect Chloe and Haley to have complete world domination? Mm-hmm. Three. I think Haley will have it, and then Chloe won't text her back. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so. Last question. Favorite middle school memory? Oh. There's a lot. You go first. I. I would have said pooping in the urinal, but that was elementary school. <laughs> Should we change this to our favorite elementary school memory? Because I can't think of any middle school ones, really. If we change it to elementary school, absolutely pooping in the urinal. Describe it. It was a dark night. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to poop. And there was somebody in the stall. So my thought process, of course, was, hey, a urinal is basically a toilet, right? <laughs> so I... Sat my ass down on the tiny little ledge and I took a shit in it and I flushed it. Later to find out, it didn't go through. Because <laughs> why would it? And that is my pooping in the urinal story. Thank you everybody so much for coming to Slam Poetry. <laughs> your your favorite elementary school memory is also me pooping in the urinal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't even there, but... Wait, what I year? I think you were, were in my class, actually. What year was it? So, it was fourth grade, I think. It was fourth and you were in my fourth grade, grade class. I wasn't your fourth grade class. We used to get in trouble sometimes, I think. Unless that was you me. You introduced and, um, me to the knife game song. <laughs> I did. Um, I I think I was in your class. We were also on the same bus, so. For some reason, I don't remember any bus rides that we had together. I do because one day there was this kid who turned around and said that we were dating. I don't remember that at all. I do. Chase, we were literally the same exact bus stop. Were we? Yeah, we were both the last ones. Oh, I remember that, but I remember... Chase, we lived like not even a street apart. I could have walked in my backyard and been in your house. I don't know. Something about that doesn't sound right. This is, about, this is a whole. This is another uh, the visit story, isn't it? 
No, no, listen. Okay, so I can tell you where I lived. By the way, I'd like to say right now that um, uh, the last podcast, Micah was yelling at me that no, I was going to visit with her. And it has been proven that I was right and I didn't. I went to go see Ouija. So get fucked. <laughs> Maybe well, now that we've we're almost a half hour in, we should probably start talking about the movies. Yes, we probably should. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Which one do we want anyway, to talk about? Um first? I would like to talk about milk. Um <laughs> Aliens. Aliens. <clears throat> I really liked it. One thing I really liked about it was that um, Newt is the first child I've seen in a horror movie that was not extremely annoying. Of course. She's great. She She doesn't have that many lines. She doesn't. And that's great because literally like children in horror movies or like sci-fi horror movies are the most annoying assholes. And she was just like a kid. Absolutely. She was adorable. You want to explain the plot? Yeah. Uh, so basically, well, I'm not very good with the technical terms. I just know the idea of it. Um, so basically, Ripley, uh, the best sci-fi character ever, of course, wakes up or is taken back to Earth after was it 57 years? I don't think she was taken back to Earth. She was just taken back to a space station that had like a medical facility on it. Honestly, I just vague ideas. So because she was know, founded by like a deep like salvage team. Yeah, they they found her, you know, just sort of vibing in a coma. <laughs> With her cat. With her cat. <laughs> Which does get a cameo. Yeah! Oh, mm-hmm. Best cameo. And they're basically like, so, do you want to do everything over again? And she says no. And she's like, and, no! And they go, Oh, but are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to? And she's like, yeah. And then she does it anyway. And they find It's a little uh, more complicated than that, but you get the yeah, idea. Yeah, it's a little more complicated, but basically it's like... And then they, they come across, like, a kid who hmm. was on that planet after, like, I guess whoever she was with, you know, <laughs> died. <laughs> did, you watch, did you watch the um extended cut? I don't think so. I don't know. I just I I'm I'm working. Did it, it have the her. scene where Newt's parents find the spaceship? Yes. Okay, then that is the extended cut. I watched the extended cut, which I think is the better version of the movie. It's like two hours long. Yeah, it it, it is very long, but I do think it's worth it. It's I think it's a lot better than Alien, the original director's cut, which is actually shorter than the original movie. Which is really weird. It came out like a couple decades. It came out in 2003. Oh, Which is a while. That's a long while. Because it was like for um, the movie's anniversary and Ridley Scott was just like, well, it's already perfect. So we'll just see what we can do. (laughs) There's some cool scenes in it, though. There's a scene where they find Dallas and um, Brett cocooned. Oh. Similar to how in this movie. Oh, cool. I really liked, I don't know if I can share my favorite scene before you want me to answer the questions, but I do have a favorite scene. Go ahead. Um, It's at the beginning. It's where she like has that dream. Oh yeah, when, um, when she's still in the medical facility with like the chest burster. I really liked that because, um, I don't know, I think the the fact that the first thing she said was to kill her, I think that's just, it, it just shows, like, her bravery and how, like, she's, like, not, she's absolutely not afraid to die if it means saving other people that she doesn't even know. Yes. I really, I really like that because it said so much about her character, like, the fact that she could even choke out just to kill her. Oh, awesome. Do you have any other notes? Gave me a seizure. To know what I have. Oh yeah, there's a few scenes in this movie that some flashing lights. You might need to be wary of it if you have epilepsy. Oh, absolutely, because I my head hurt so badly, and like I wasn't. I'm not even epileptic. Like I just felt like I was gonna have a seizure if I kept watching. I think the worst offender is the scene where, um, towards the end of the movie, 
when all the aliens come through the ceiling. Oh my god, yeah. Which is an awesome scene. Absolutely. I love the shot of them all coming through the ceiling. It looks so awesome. I don't usually feel things with horror movies, but that one made me like, oh, I made my skin crawl. So it, gross. Just like the way they move. And it's just um, like, ugh. If any of you guys have been to Salem, Massachusetts, there's a um, there's something called the Monster Museum, and it's a bunch of scale wax figures of like horror movie um, like monsters and stuff. And I've seen like the xenomorph, like the aliens, like full scale. And I think just seeing that, and now like seeing the movies, so gross. They're like so tall. Oh, they're fucking enormous. I think one of my favorite scenes from the original is when the alien stands up against Lambert and it's like nine feet tall. Ugh. Yeah, they're, they're, they're enormous. Do you have any other notes? Um, no, I just really liked it. I think I might... Uh, wait, didn't you say that the third one's really bad? It's not. It's complicated. I'll skip the third one. <laughs> no, you can't skip the third one. It's actually really important. Oh, why do they make the important ones bad? Well, I might spoil it l- after we... Because the thing... It's not a bad movie. It's a, it's a mediocre movie, but it has one thing about it that really pisses me off, and it happens right at the beginning of the movie. And <laughs> I might spoil what it is later if you want me to after we're finished with these questions. No, I want to be mad because I know that you wanna. I know that you want me to watch it, so I want to be mad when I see it. Okay, I want you to watch it and then like immediately like um. Do you want me to uh, FaceTime you when I when I watch it? Yeah, you can because it's like right at the beginning. It's literally the opening scene. Okay, I will FaceTime you. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the questions. Absolutely. That we have for the when we have good movies, we ask questions. Yeah. Because um, this one was uh very interesting. I feel like we have uh, some interesting questions here because. Okay, so this film is really beloved by a lot of people, including me. I prefer it over the original. So do I. But there's certain people who are detractors of it that really love the first one. And so my first question is, because this movie decided to take less of a horror route and more of an action route, like by introducing things like weapons and the way that the characters fight back against them and actually manage to kill them do you think that it's better or worse than the original i don't think it's i don't think it's like better for that reason i think that you know the introduction of weapons really helps it because i don't know like how you would introduce more aliens without introducing a way for people to defend themselves because like that scene where like they all come out the ceiling like what would you do without the weapons like what would you do without more weapons and they still manage to fuck shit up like, it's not like it stops them dead in their tracks. Right. And, like, I think that it, I, I don't know, I think it introduces more just because, again, it is 57 years in the future. So, of course, they're going to be more prepared for that. And I also think that it's, like, it's a very different, I like the fact that we already saw these, like, characters who were, like, completely defenseless in this horror setting. It's very interesting to see, like, these, like, army marines go up against these guys. And, like, it's really rare that you find... A sequel that's good, you know? (laughs) So, like, why get so mad over the fact that there's, like, weapons when you could just appreciate the fact that they took an idea that isn't really, like, can't you can't really build more on it, and they found a way to build more on it without seeming like they were milking it. Wes Craven. (laughs) Occasionally. (laughs) Um, Okay, so my next question is, I feel like this is the big, this is the big one that I see people, when they compare the original to this one and it's some people don't like the way that the aliens are portrayed in this movie in the original the xenomorph was portrayed as the perfect organism it's was like a killing machine and it could reproduce completely on its own like it didn't need anything else like all it needed was a person to turn into an egg and i could use that to reproduce which is what happened in that deleted scene that ended up being in the director's cut of the original yeah but people don't like the fact that there's a queen now that it like 
people don't like the fact that they're more like insects and it makes that, them less scary i think that makes it more scary how many people do you know that are afraid of insects so like to see like i'm terrified of insects exactly so to see like it, this isn't like a perfect comparison but to see like a 10 foot tall cockroach just reproducing on its own and then to see the fact that it has like like the bigger being that is like running all of that that's disgusting and i love it it's, it's a good people, idea i think that people think that having a queen contradicts that but i don't think so i think that they can reproduce both ways i think just having a queen is faster for them that's why they're still there it's been 57 years can't they like evolve i guess so the, these are these aliens in this movie are different than the ones in the original these are yeah. like worker aliens i think they're called something like they're like drones i think that's yeah. what they're called but like you know they they evolve it's been like 50 something years i think it's possible to not only evolve but you know that idea doesn't doesn't ruin the rest of it you know like i've seen so many movies where like they just take different ideas and it completely like doesn't work with what they already built and this one works with what they've already built because they're fucking aliens dude yeah I think it just takes everything about the original and just like takes it up a notch. Yeah, and that's how you, these things work. Yeah, and that's what you want to do instead of milking it until it's dead. Because something you'll learn about when we get into um, Prometheus is that Ridley Scott in that movie really likes to over-explain things about these aliens and like where they come from. And I think this is the perfect amount of expanding on them without over-explaining it. Right. It's just like, we're learning more about them, but it's still ambiguous enough where it's still scary. Yeah. No, I... I felt scared, and I wasn't even, like, in the movie or in the vicinity. Hmm. The one thing that I couldn't stop thinking about, though, um, and this is a little bit off-topic, but still on-topic, was why the fuck did Michael Eisner want to make a Disney ride out of this movie? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would ride it every day. But they wanted it to be like... Like fucking E.T.? No, no, no. They didn't want you to move. It's basically a ride where you sit down, you strap in, you're in the complete darkness, you hear noises, your seat moves, and it feels like you're like trapped with this thing. That sounds terrifying, and I want to ride it. Yeah, but not at Disney. Can you imagine yeah, you're going to... fucking Disney? Magic so Kingdom. That these movies are owned by Disney. Magic Kingdom. All right, so before we go on Space Mountain, who wants to go on the alien encounter ride? Where you're going to get infected with a face hugger and then have a chest burster come out your chest. Stop crying, Timmy. We're going on the ride. We already spent the money. No, we can't go see Belle. We have to go on the alien ride. <laughs> okay, so... Next up is, do you think that at the beginning, did you think that Bishop was going to turn on them like in Ash did in the original? So, oh, but then I was like, Chase really likes the sequel. And if they made such a cliched move, I don't think he would have recommended it as a good one. And also, how relieved were you to see that he's actually a really cool guy? Oh, I was so happy. I was very happy. I thought he was... I, I, it, it really was a step up because it, it really... This movie really does play with your expectations of what happens. Unlike most sequels where they're just like, it happened again. Oh yeah, and it's the same it. thing, but it's again. It's like Jaws 2. It's like the same movie. <laughs> yeah, so like I really, liked, I really liked how they just sort of took that expectation and they flipped it a little bit. And it was really nice. It really broke me when, like at the end, where they... um. You can see that he's been holding on to Newt, like, at the end oh, of the movie. Yeah. And she has to, like, take him. Oh, that hurt. That hurt so badly. Oh, I'm very excited to hear the, your answer to this question. Of all the Marines, who is your favorite? Um, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm really bad with the names. Was his name? It was the guy who turned on them. The guy Wait, who, he's not a marine. He's not a marine. I don't know. He, are you, I just are you talking about the like the business dude? 
Burke. Yeah, I don't know. I I, fig- I thought I just figured that everybody on there was Burke. <laughs> no, he's just a business dude. I don't even know why he came along. Well, to make sure that everything went smooth. I guess so. Well, yeah, because he was sabotaging it. But like from their perspective, it's like, why is he coming? I really, I, I really liked the chick too. Vasquez. Yeah. She's my favorite. I really liked her. I really, I really liked the scene where they blow up, like when they're in the vent. Oh yeah. I was so sad when I saw that movie for the first time and she died. See, and it was really good because my one note on the first Alien movie was that um, the chick that was there again. I'm so bad at names when it comes to movies, unless I've seen it. Yeah, Lambert. Lambert was fucking useless. Yeah, she didn't really do anything. She did help get the oxygen tanks. Yeah, but, but like for the escape pod. But other than that, she didn't do anything. Other than that, she didn't do anything. But like, I really liked that they like. It was a very good surprise to see that there was another woman on the on the ship that wasn't entirely useless. Um, I really enjoy the line w- that she says to Bill Paxton, where he's like. Hey Vesquez, you ever been mistaken for a man? And she's like, "No, have you?" <laughs> <laughs> I like her last line. She calls him an asshole. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> you're such an asshole, Gorman. Blow up. <laughs> Fucking blows up. Oh, I also love um, fuck. What's Bill Paxton's character's name? Oh shit! You're asking the wrong person. <clears throat> What's his name? I gotta look it up. I will not Hudson. disrespect his legacy. Hudson. 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 I guess I fucking love Hudson. Hudson was really good. I, I love all his line delivery. My favorite character, like, overall, is Newt. I love her. Of course. I love her so much. She really was just like... And she's she's pretty badass, too. She's a kid, you know? So you can't really rely on her to do too much. But she survived so long. Yeah, like, she's managed to do that, like, absolutely, like, on her own as a little kid. Like, that's fucking impressive. They couldn't even do that. These fully trained Marines. I really like the, the, um, when they were all, when it was, um, her and Ripley and they were getting attacked and she, like, crushed the thing with, like, the the table. Oh, yeah, that was so cool. She she literally was, like, sitting there and screaming. Also, she looked down and she was like, okay, I guess it's time to kill. Also, something I want to talk about. I was I said something about this earlier something I wanted to talk about on the podcast because um okay so during the the scene where they're escaping the nest you know that scene right where they're getting in like the they're getting in like the car yeah so during the filming of that scene they had like a lot of fire but the fire started making like toxic fumes and the actors nearly fucking suffocated on set That's terrifying it really is. They had to like get them out and give them like fucking like oxygen, <laughs> just oh, to like give them fucking air. I'm gonna be honest. I hate that 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 those things happen, but I love stories like that. Like that chick who almost drowned on set, but everyone thought she was just like a really good actress. <laughs> I can't remember what movie it was, but she was like in this giant tank of water, and they had her underwater for like three minutes and she was like drowning and she was like hitting on the glass to make them like take her out and everyone was like that was a really good scene (laughs) (laughs) she's just fucking dying okay so do you think that this movie is a good conclusion for ripley's character or do you think another movie was necessary i'm biased i want to see her all the time um, I think it's a pretty good conclusion, though. I don't think I don't think you could have another movie because realistically, I don't think that she would be like, "I could do that again." <laughs> she does. <laughs> and I think, and oh god, I just think after a while, like being in space for fifty-seven years, like in that sort of like um, environment where like you're constantly fighting for your life, I feel like time would eventually catch up to you. And finally, my last question is okay. that what do you, th- w- as like a prediction, what do you think is going to ha- happen 
in Alien 3 regarding like Newt Ripley, Hicks, and Bishop, like the only survivors from this movie. I think that can you tell me how many years has gone by? It happens immediately after Aliens. Immediately after? So yeah. it can't even be that cool thing where like Newt's all grown up and she takes over. I would have loved to see that. Trust I me, loved I would have loved to see that. To see that. But that's not what happens. So I I can't that was such a good ending. I it can't really possibly, was. I can't possibly think of another thing where like a bunch of writers could be like, we can do this again, can we? I don't know. Just like, do you think that they they would send more people, like back to that planet, and maybe it's the same thing but words? Alien Three is going to be such an interesting discussion. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything else that could possibly happen. Maybe again, all I can think of is that they're just so eager for like a specimen that they just send more people. I'll, the only thing I'll say regarding Alien 3 so far is that that movie was riddled with production issues. It was in development hell. <laughs> so I'll, oh. I'll, I'll let that be like preface before you watch it. I'll Maybe I'll record your reaction to the thing that is gonna inevitably is going to piss you off. It's going to be like the lie. It's going to be like the lie. Trying to think of what could piss me off. It's gonna like it might even be worse than the lie. Worse than the lie? You were coughing, Chase. <laughs> Physical you're, Like I'm 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 gonna say this right now. Like you're gonna be angry. Please don't say that they replaced the actress who plays Ripley. You just have to see. Well no, that doesn't happen. It's so still, still okay. Sony Weaver. But Okay. There's so I I I don't I'm not gonna say another word about it. You just have to see what happens. Okay, okay. So now that we've discussed Aliens, a kick-ass movie. Now we're gonna talk about um the masterpiece that is Stuart Little. <laughs> can I tell Can I tell the story? What about <laughs> how I figured out who wrote this movie? It was a Monday morning. I wake up and I've got three missed calls. <laughs> Chase, please. I've got three missed calls and like five messages. And I'm like, oh God, what happened? So I called, I think I called you after that. And I said, did you call me? And you said, yeah. Do you know who wrote this fucking movie? <laughs> and I went, Yes. Because you knew, you you sick bastard. You you tricked me. You thought we weren't going to have a podcast episode where we don't shit on him. And you were wrong. Because I said... Stuart Little is written by fucking M. Night Shyamalan. I don't... You thought the punishment was just watching the CGI. <laughs> I just thought the punishment was watching this shitty children's movie. I didn't know he wrote it. Where, I, you don't expect that to be in his goddamn filmography next to old and the happening or signs like like you're just like oh my god, M Night Shyamalan, The Sixth Sense, oh oh signs, Stuart Little. <laughs> Like, you don't expect that. It looks so out of place. You, when you're editing this, to take the, um, I want you to take the posters from The Sixth Sense, The, the Happening, The Sign. I'm gonna, like, like go through, like, on Google, like, his, like, oh. list of movies he's been in, and I'm just gonna <laughs> show how fucking out of place it looks. No, why don't you take, like, The Sixth Sense... And the sun, and then just put Stuart Little in the middle, so you can see how bright it is compared to the other movie. <laughs> What's funny is the fact that the one thing I said that was good about the last Airbender movie was the fact that I liked its cover art. Yeah, <laughs> Stuart Little's cover art looks like shit. <laughs> I feel like I took I took a uh, computer graphics class. I feel 
feel like I could have made that if I wanted to. I feel like a fourth grader could have made that in like MS Paint. I'm gonna look up the cover. <laughs> it looks so bad. It really. <laughs> There is really nothing. The primary colors on it really slap you in the face. Okay. By the way, I should preface it. We're, this isn't going to be another shitting on M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> we, we had enough of that, and we're going to save it for old. Um, I just looked at the cover of this, and it says, From the co-director of Lion King. Did M. Night Shyamalan co-direct The Lion King? No, there was another, there was another guy who wrote it. He, it, was, it was M. Night Shyamalan and another dude. M. Night Shyamalan and M. Night Shyamalan The Lion King? What is it? M. Night Shyamalan and M. Night Shyamalan 2. They're twins. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't... We, one was enough. One was too many. There's another one running around. He lives in a cave. <laughs> They're all getting older! <laughs> Oh my god, we just cracked the code, Chase. There's two M. Night Shyamalans. The first one wrote The Sixth Sense, and the other one wrote everything else. Literally everything else. <laughs> and before you come at me and say Signs is a good movie, watch it again. <laughs> watch it again. Oh my god. Alright, so, would you like to give a synopsis for Stuart Little? I mean really not much of a plot here uh, but by the way i should preface this by saying that like you know that i like a movie when i don't have a lot of notes because you know i'm getting like very like into it and i forget yeah. to write stuff yeah. um, that being said i have nearly four pages of notes My fucking God. <laughs> uh, there, there's a lot um so Stuart little is about a family a very rich white family that's comprised of house <laughs> The fucking dude from that show house. <laughs> and the, um, the wife from Beetlejuice. And they decide they want to go to an orphanage to ad adopt a kid. And they, they, you know, they walk in there and there's all these adorable kids. Oh, I'm sure who would love to go home and be spoiled with this nice rich family. And of course they choose the fucking mouse. <laughs> for no reason. Just because he was nice to them. I was watching a scene, like, just so I could get sort of prepared for this. And in the scene, this little boy brings them a ball. And they're like, oh, how sweet. And then he skips off, and they're like, we'll take the rat. Yeah, seriously, that boy was so nice. It's funny, too, because I didn't realize until halfway through this movie that Stuart Little is voiced by Michael J. Fox. <laughs> Which is even weird. Like, what is this cast? They also have the dad from Beetlejuice as one of the relatives. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. We also have uh, Jonathan Lipnicki. <laughs> That's a funny name. I guess all these... Yeah, it is a funny name. I guess all the budget went to paying these actors instead of the CGI because <laughs> it's a little rough. $1,000... $12,000 and three pennies from underneath my car seat. CGI. As a treat. Price, the price of a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> it's like, it's weird because disregarding the art style, the actual model isn't awful. It's just the way it's composited against the background that just, it looks so bad. Oh, it's terrible. And it's hilarious because it's very clear that the actors are looking at nothing half the time. So like it's really the, funny when, like, when they're tucking him into the bed, and they're just like clearly like not even looking at him. Tennis ball on the stick. <laughs> I I don't even think they gave him that. I think they were just like he's right there. Just we don't have enough spot. money for tennis balls. We already paid Jonathan Lipnicki. <laughs> so yeah, so Stuart Little comes home and. Something really confusing about this movie, which took me aback, is the fact that for some reason they can understand Stuart just fine, but they can't understand the cat. Like um, it's like Pluto and Goofy. <laughs> like, what's going on there? Like it's so weird because the cat talks, and then I was like, oh okay, so he's not the only talking animal here. But then I was like, but wait, why can they not hear the cat? 
Can I just say that the colors in this movie are atrocious? It's so, like, it's so bright yet dull. It's like... <laughs> it's like an oxymoron. It's, it's like, um... I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a metaphor. <laughs> it's like a Picasso painting. Um, also, it's so sad because in the scene where they're tucking him in, the bed is a normal size, which just goes to show that they were planning to adopt a child. <laughs> It's kind of like if you're, like, a fully grown kid and then, like, someone adopts you and then they bring you home and it's, like, they have, like, a crib for you. It's like, sorry, we were expecting a baby. It's, like, the same yeah. kind of thing. But, like, just to see it, because now you're, like, thinking of all the kids in that orphanage. <laughs> it's so sad. It, the, the, those kids really got the fucking raw end of the stick. Seriously, it's such a terrible, like... It's terrible. If I were in an orphanage and I saw these very rich people walk out with a mouse from like under the floorboards that they found. Seriously. Do you know how much adoption costs, Chase? It's a lot of fucking money. <laughs> For a mouse. By the way, I would like to, I have two things to add. Go ahead. One is the fact that the cat the reason why he's mad is a hundred percent justified. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I fully agree with him. And it's so annoying that he's like, I've learned my lesson at the end of the movie. Cause it's like, you were right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause like the whole, he, the whole reason he's mad is because they bring home Stuart home and he's an animal and they're treating him like a human while the cat gets treated like a cat. Like that's not fair. The cat is just as intelligent as him. If not more, Say, if not even more intelligent, and it's so. Uh, just get the cat a goddamn human bed and feed him dinner. Like, like I wouldn't put up with that shit either. I, I'd, I'd, I'd want to kill him too. Why couldn't Stuart have just been like, hey, so you know your cat? Yeah, give him some fucking shit. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like, literally, this could have been solved so easy if Stuart was just like, hey, you can understand me. Your cat right now just wants to be treated like a human. So if you could just, like, I don't know, put him in some clothes. So what if, like, Stuart Little was just like, yo, your cat can talk just as well as I can. They're like, what? Cats can talk? <laughs> <laughs> they, like, faint. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the second thing I wanted to note is the fact that they try way too hard to make Stuart likable, and he's really annoying. He really is. Like, he's way too nice. I hate it, because he has, like, I don't like to throw around the term Mary Sue a lot, but he's damn close to it. <laughs> yeah, all I can think about is Stuart Little is somebody's self-insert OC. Yeah, basically, because it's like the only thing that makes him not a Mary Sue is the fact that not everybody likes him. But even though they like him by the end of the movie, everybody likes him. So maybe he still falls under that. But other than that, he's like, he's super nice to everybody. He's good at things. Yeah. He like never gets angry or upset. Can I ask a question? And it's like, he's so boring. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. So... In children's media, um, the whole point of children's media is to have a moral. What was the what moral? do you think? What do you think the moral of Stuart Little was? What do you think like the the message was? Because again, children's media really does have like its own agenda. So, what do you think M Night Shyamalan was trying to teach kids? Um, if you're in an orphanage, sometimes <laughs> you just don't get picked. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I think that's what he was trying to prove, honestly. I, I can't really think of a message besides, like, treat everybody how you want to be treated. But even then, like, how but would it's, they Even know? then, like, the cat is still treated like shit, even at the end of the movie. The cat's still treated the exact same. It's, uh, like where you are, I suppose. Orphans, because yeah. you're going to be there a long time. Don't fucking t talk up to me. <laughs> I will 
punch your shit in. <laughs> and, <laughs> something else I think is funny is the fact that this whole movie is like what I think other countries think that rich white families are like. And it's true. Because like they Me? all just like perfectly uniformly eat breakfast and they all have like <laughs> nice clothes and all the family gets together to like have like nice times and it's just like no family is like this not even rich families listen chase neither of us are rich that could be exactly how they are are you fucking kidding me this is the life that they're living right now with with rats <laughs> you told me the rat gets to live that life and i can't <laughs> i am full speciesist when it comes to this movie chase you're an adult and um neither of your parents um Love what do Stuart's parents do? Just leave him? Fucking, I don't know. They, like, gave him away to some people they just met. And okay. they're like, oh my god, he got kidnapped? <laughs> How could this have happened? Like, you literally just met, the, like, they didn't have any proof of being his parents other than the fact that they're mice. That's like... Chase, if you were living with a family of a different race and two random white people came to the door and they were just like, hey, that's our kid Chase. Oh my god, they're white. They must be his family. <laughs> like, imagine how racist that would be if it was like a different race. It was just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, the Indian people are here. That must be that little Indian boy's family. I think that's like, I, Chase, I think that's like, I think that's like the like how people think that rich white people are i guess so i, that, I, I guess i think that, i think that might have been a metaphor Incredibly like racist i really they might be right that's the twist <laughs> the twist was the movie was actually about racism I, it, the, it's so weird the fact that this movie has such an all-star cast but no one can act that's that's you again chase what do i tell you every time you say that if a person who's really good at acting is put in an M. Night Shyamalan movie, all of their acting ability goes away. Seriously. It's like they like the parents give the most emotionless performances of their lives. Like the dad is on the house. He's pretty used to doing like sort of the emotionless stuff, but he's not the house is a diff very different character than the dad. So I feel like that's not the way he, you should have went about that. And like, the mom can act. We've seen her in Beetlejuice. It's a damn yeah. good performance. House everybody in this MP. movie can act. We've everybody in this movie has been in other movies and have done a better job. Well, it's because M Night Shyamalan goes to them and they're like, and he like, he's like, I don't know. I think M Night Shyamalan, like the casting director for all his movies, put they put them in a room and they like hypnotize them and they're like, you've never acted before. <laughs> You know, like the spirals like on all the TVs and they're like you were never in a better movie oh yeah another thing I'd like to add is the fact that um, every scene with the cats like the gangster cats reminds me of how I wish this whole movie was just them <laughs> they're they way are, more entertaining they're really the highlight of the movie because, like, they actually, like, told jokes that I thought were funny. I wrote one that I thought was actually funny. Would you like to tell me? I'm, an, I'm the audience. Tell me a joke, Chase. Wh which was it? <laughs> I like how one of my notes is just, I'm so bored. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be one of my notes in old. Oh, it was this. Oh no, it wasn't from the cats. It was actually the scene where the detectives are going over like photos of dead bodies and saying that like Stuart is like act is like that's what happened to him. That made me laugh. <laughs> Maybe just because it was me picturing that Stuart Little died, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> but I thought that was funny. Oh yeah, there's actually one great thing about this movie. Like, legitimately great thing. Is it ended? No, it's... Um, the music. It's really fucking good. 
Who composed the music? If I may it's ask. Alan Silvestri, and he's a fucking awesome. He composed the music for Back to the Future, one of my favorite uh, movie scores of all time. And he like puts his all into this movie. Like, the only reason I wasn't falling asleep during it is because his music was playing. I love movies that aren't like that great like on the outside but they have amazing scores because it's just so funny to think about the fact that the writers and the actors and everybody else couldn't give two shits but this guy is like composing music yeah seriously like he's putting his all into this like i like i don't know why but like like listen tarzan was a good movie but it's not my favorite and phil collins oh fuck Oh my god. He like <laughs> I swear to god that man like just like you can't make better music for a movie than Phil Collins did for Tarzan. Like just objectively. Um oh yeah. I think I know another reason why the CGI looks really bad is because it always looks like it's a different frame rate than everything else. Did you notice that? Oh my god, but when you're animating something, that's like the worst thing you can do. But like, he, everything looks like it's like 30 frames per second, and he looks like he's like 24. And that's, that's really... Okay, I, I'm about to go back to every class I just took. When you're animating something, the industry standard is 24 frames per second, but that doesn't mean that you always have to go at 24 frames per second. Especially when the rest of the movie isn't. Yeah, I think that the industry standard for just film cameras in general is 30 frames per second, and but for animation, they're pretty like 24 frames. I think you could have changed that when you're rendering I think, it. I think live action caps at 30 but for animation it's 24 but when you it's 100 percent 24 like almost always yeah but and the thing about that is but that's for movies that are fully animated yeah not those are for... not for like when you're mixing cg with live action they need to be the same frame rate they slowed them down <laughs> and it, it looks so bad it's also just because, compared to everything else, I don't know how to describe this, like, too well. Okay. Okay. But I'm, I almost got distracted. I don't know how to describe this very well, but when you're watching a CGI animation, when you're watching Stuart Little, he's too smooth. Yeah, I, like, I get that. When I, when I see, like, CGI with, like, real life... I kind of describe it as they look gummy. Like, yeah, they, look they look like shiny. Squishy. They look shiny. They look like chewy. And they look <laughs> they look like they're made out of rubber. Um, I mean, I need to look through my notes. Oh, God. There's, oh, yeah. Then the parents show up and the mom is played by Jennifer Tilly for some reason. That's another actress that's been in this awful movie. Oh, Jen Tilly. I love Jennifer Tilly. I Poor do, thing. too. She is in the shittiest movies. Except Seed of Chucky. No, that movie's awful. I am a sucker for Seed of Chucky. I like Ride of Chucky, but only when she's in it. As soon yeah, as she gets transferred sense. into the doll, I lose interest. Oh, really? I was going to say the opposite. I mean, I love her. I love, I love her in all of it, I mean. No, I, I mean, like, because... I don't know. Her human form is sexy as fuck. And then, like, I'm not attracted to the doll. I'm sorry. No one's asking me to be attracted to the doll. Yeah, but, like, that was the reason why I was even interested in the movie in the first place. Because she's hot. She is hot. She's very hot. <laughs> One of my notes is they really just called 911 about a fucking mouse. <laughs> Help! He's dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, for some reason, something that really bothered me is when he's in the toy car and then he turns on the radio. How the fuck does that toy car have a radio? 
They're rich. They're rich, Chase. They're rich. This is how rich white people act. Of course. <laughs> Can you imagine? They're like, like the the dad who <laughs> is like is like fixing up and like installing a car radio in there, and his wife is like, "Honey, what are you doing?" And he's like. Just in case any mice want to get in here, I don't know. <laughs> He's like trembling. <laughs> Same thing goes for that like boat for the sailing. It's like just in case a, a, a mouse wants to steer this thing. I don't know something about it. So God is telling me right now that there's gonna be a mouse in the house. All right, sweetheart. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will say though that like scene where like the race is like it feels like it's supposed to be the ending of the movie but it's not it happens like not even halfway through you, you took a deep breath and then all of a sudden <laughs> it started up again <laughs> i i love how like <laughs> i love watching movies like this and just seeing how cartoonishly evil the bullies are <laughs> i love cartoonish bullies I, I think it's hilarious how he's like he has like minions <laughs> and like it's like boat like murders the other boats oh it's great oh yeah I also like to note the fact that there's like seven sequels to this movie <laughs> hold on I need to look there are a lot of sequels Stuart Little series Stuart Little um, single handedly killed oh. every orphanage Oh, oh my god. What? Hold on. Stuart Little franchise. I need a whole list. I need like I need to go down. Okay. Stuart Okay, so So there's three movies in a possible reboot. I'm so excited. What? Stuart Little was based on a 1945 children's novel. Okay, that that makes sense why there's a goddamn orphanage. Um, there's an animated series? There was an animated series, um... It's one season, and it aired in 2003. There's a big... I don't... <laughs> I don't know what this is for, but when I was looking through Stuart Little Franchise, I went to the images, and there's a picture of Marty McFly, at the Avengers, and Stuart Little all lined up. And I don't know what they have to do with the other... Besides Marty McFly being Stuart Little. Yeah, the fact that, I, like, Michael J. Fox is not an Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even say Marty McFly, you just said Michael J. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's all we have really to talk about with Stuart Little. Um, weird family movie, really weird. I wouldn't suggest showing it to your children because they are going to think that they are going to, a rat is going to be picked over them. You sit them down and you go, that's what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Nobody wants to I'm gonna be with the a, rat. I'm going to be with a famous rich family? No. I'm going to be in an orphanage and they're going to choose the rat. This is what happens when you don't shape up. <laughs> it's like slap them. <laughs> be a better kid. <laughs> We're sending you to the orphanage with Stuart Little. And he's going to get picked over you. Children's own personal hell is where they relive when they got picked, when <laughs> Stuart Little got picked over them. Hold on. The dogs are barking. Hold on. I'll be right back. You want to, like, have, like, a... Murdered. Is this the part where, in every podcast, where I leave for a second and then you leave me a message for editing? Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. I'm leaving. What Chase doesn't know is that I'm actually in his house. I'm in the walls. And, um, I'm making the dogs bark. Um, what's a good message for you? You're not gonna be gone very long, huh? Um, well, who wants to hear some copyrighted music? Now that he's not here. He'll just have to um edit it out. Okay, quick. Hey.
That's it. That's all you get. We'll just have to deal with that. I don't want him to catch me. <laughs> he could be here. Oh, I don't know. Okay, that was really loud. Um, what else do I have to say? You know, just checking on the dogs. This is a very long time to be out. I kind of have a bad feeling. I haven't heard any screaming, though. So. It's good. Um, so, um, guys, I have a very funny story. So, um, the other night, I sent Chase this video of, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Damn it. I, don't, I think the dogs are starting to get bored. Like, I, I'm probably going to need to end this soon so I, I can go, like, be with them <laughs> so they don't act up. I really hope no one played any copyrighted music when you're God gone. damn it! <laughs> what song did you like play? Two, it was only two seconds of it. I can't tell you. Now I gotta go edit that out. All the revenue, the whole, all the two cents are gonna go towards that. Listen, listen. It was only like two minutes not even no not two minutes sorry it's only like two seconds i really didn't even i only they played the get intro that shit. they will get that shit you do, you don't I the, i'm just telling you so that you know you don't have to cut out that much <laughs> but like trust me I'm like just, fucking these companies are insane they're like oh is that I'm, like 0. 0.00000.1 percent of our song fork over the oh cash. no believe me believe me i understand the intro is very famous we're fucked. Uncle just winds us over. I really can't wait to hear what you have to say about that part. I can't wait to see what you have to say about Alien 3. I can't wait to want to kill myself over the first, what, few minutes? Yeah. Is there any other Is there any other uh, topics for this podcast that you'd like to discuss? See, I went to Disney. Oh, um, yeah? I recently went to I recently went to Galaxy's Edge, and um, I know nothing about Star Wars. And stay tuned for, um, <laughs> we're going to have like three whole podcasts dedicated to Michael watching Star Wars, so. Absolutely. Um, I went to Disney. Um, that was very fun. Um, everybody in line did not like me. <laughs> because I kept... Um, we went, we went on Smuggler's Shit. Run, and, and so whenever something on, the on like, the loudspeaker went off, it would be, like, two characters, and they'd be like, oh, the Millennium Falcon went into poop fart mode. I don't know. That was, that was <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I'd look at my cousin, who was very much into Star Wars, and I'd go, oh, my God, was that Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> <laughs> So everything after that, and like you know, imagine being a hardcore Star Wars fan who's like, in Galaxy's Edge. I would Edge probably be very time. annoyed if I didn't know you were joking. <laughs> yeah. So like, imagine being like in the line for like something that you probably waited for for a very long time, and this bitch who you could be in front of, but no, is taking up the space. Um, well, keeps asking. Wars. Keeps asking if that's Obi Wan Kenobi. Do you even know what Obi Wan looks like? It looks like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to know. I remember because I some lady put a picture of Obi-Wan in her house <laughs> because her son told him it was, her, it was Jesus. He deserves it more than the real Jesus. But, like, every single time, like, there were people around us and I could feel, like, the energy off them. And like they weren't the really The negative annoying. energy of go fuck yourself. <laughs> Like I'm, I don't, I like get it. I'm like, like they're like I could be like three spaces ahead if this asshole who didn't know anything about Star Wars wasn't in the line. <laughs> like there would be like a there was like a droid and it like made like a little noise and I was like oh my god are they st are they talking to Obi Wan Kenobi? <laughs> <laughs> to keep up Just the charade. <laughs> Just everything was Obi Wan Kenobi. Like, every, anytime something happened, anytime a noise was made, I was like, "Oh yeah!" So that's like the part in the movie where Obi Wan Kenobi like flew the Millennium Falcon, and they were like, 
steaming. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to note that the fact that you were in Galaxy's Edge is the reason why this podcast episode took look so long to come out. Yeah, I'm currently in Florida, and um, in a few days, well, uh, in a week, I'll be going to Universal, so that'd be fun. Yeah, and you also got a fucking sinus infection, which didn't help. No, that didn't. Um, so Chase called me the other day, and I was I wasn't on my nighttime cold medication yet, but I was. I think. I was like so tired and so like infected that I, I sent him a video of this Cheeto in the ice dispenser. <laughs> Which we referenced and earlier. It was just like a video where this lady was like trying to make like a cute aesthetic video and she put the cup up to the ice dispenser and just like one, one singular Cheeto <laughs> <laughs> fell out of the dispenser and it was like 12 o'clock at night and I laughed so hard and like could not breathe and not only that I was coughing so I can't breathe out of my nose I'm laughing as hard as I can you just can't <laughs> and Chase isn't laughing which is making me laugh even more <laughs> it, I didn't find it funny at all like not even slightly <laughs> and, and what, told- what you, you laughing so hard is what made me laugh and I told him when I sent it to him, I said, Chase, this isn't funny. And I sent it to him. And he was like, yeah, that's not funny. And I laughed so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> but, like, I was laughing so hard that it was, like, silent and wheezy. Oh, yeah, it was like... So- <laughs> <laughs> and, like, because it was really bad. So I can't breathe. And I finally get over it. And this asshole decides <laughs> <laughs> to hook up the karaoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like super echoing. And he just says, Cheeto, Cheeto, Cheeto. And it just like echoes. And I fucking lost it. If you want, I can go put it was... in a karaoke machine and give everybody an example. <laughs> no, because I won't be able to handle it. That might be really funny. <laughs> I'm gonna go do it. <laughs> Cheeto. <laughs> Please tell me the mic picked that up. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, God, I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Don't vomit. Hmm. Cheeto. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you could hear that clearly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but no, oh you, you, were, you were like literally like crying laughing for like 10 minutes straight after I did that because I did it without warning. I just like all of a sudden we were on FaceTime and I just went... Cheeto. <laughs> you were literally like, okay, that's enough. And then after I calmed down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think it would be that funny. <laughs> it, was like, it was like three o'clock in the morning. Everything was funny. <laughs> I should just use oh this karaoke God. machine more often for the podcast. <laughs> Why were you coughing at one o'clock in the morning? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Why was there only one cheat of one thing was just passing?
And that video gave me COVID. So I think that's going to be it for this podcast. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Thank you everybody so much for listening. Um, Next podcast, we'll be watching M. Night Shyamalan's 2021 hit movie, Old, and American Psycho. Unless you also we want to watch Alien 3 for the next one. Yes. Next podcast, we might be watching Old. <laughs> No, I definitely want to watch old, but we'll see. Next podcast, we're just going to watch movies. How about that? Yeah, that's what we always do. So fucking mm-hmm. shape you up. Watch your, mic. <laughs> <laughs> your mic cut out. <laughs> what Next podcast, we're going <laughs> this is why when we're glad that nobody's home. Oh, I can't say the same. <laughs> All right. Thank you everybody join so much for listening. Ne- I'll see you guys le- next time. Yeah, join us next episode where we I don't know, we'll do something wacky like watch a movie. <laughs> We've never done that before. No. Alright, fucking bye. <laughs>